And the first thing he's going to do is head up to the old starboard ammonia tank, and he's going to grab a fixed grapple bar, which you see flashing in blue. He's going to unbolt that from the old ammonia tank, and he'll actually take this over to the payload bay. And we'll be using this fixed grapple bar. This is what allows the, uh, the station robotic arm to grapple the ammonia tank. Like I said before, we'll be uh, using the robotic arm to move the ammonia tank for all three EVAs since it's so big and heavy. So Rick will grab that fixed grapple bar and he'll translate down space station. He will do a tether swap to a second safety tether on the Japanese experiment module. Then he'll head down to the payload bay. And once he gets there, he's going to go aft in the payload bay and he's going to temporarily stow that FGB, that fixed grapple bar, on the LMC. And the LMC is a platform that we're used to launch the new ammonia tank, which is the big white box there. While he's doing that, Clay's going to follow him out of the airlock, and Clay will also head up to the old starboard ammonia tank, and he is going to disconnect the nitrogen lines and the ammonia lines that go to that ammonia tank. This is just in preparation for EVA2 when we actually swap out this tank. So once he's done disconnecting those four lines, he'll put the, the thermal cover back over them. He'll go to the forward side of the truss, uh, to a CETA cart. CETA cart is a mobile EVA work platform that we use. And he's going to grab an articulated portable foot restraint, or just a foot restraint, uh, from that CETA cart, put it on his body restraint tether, and he'll take that to the payload bay. So on his way there, uh, just as Rick did, uh, Clay will do a tether swap to a second tether to allow him to reach the payload bay, except he'll do it on top of the node 2 module. And then he'll head down and meet Rick in the payload bay at the LMC. And once he's at the LMC, Clay's going to install his foot restraint into a worksite interface, or a WIF. And while Clay's doing that, Rick is going to bolt that fixed grapple bar to the side of the ammonia tank. You can see the fixed grapple bar is flashing in blue here. So bolt that on, and this is, again, what the arm will use to grapple the ammonia tank so we can move it. Simultaneously, Clay uh, will be installing that foot restraint into the LMC. Once he gets it installed, he will pop into it and... Rick and Clay will then unbolt the four bolts that hold the ammonia tank to the LMC, and they'll pick it up out of the soft docks and hand it to the arm, where the arm's going to grapple it. Once the arm has it, uh, Clay's going to remove his foot restraint off the LMC. He's going to take it out of the payload bay and put it on node 2 and just leave it there until he needs it again on EVA 3. And while he's doing that, Rick is going to be translating out to the Japanese experiment module, to the exposed facility on it, where he's going to retrieve uh, the impact seed experiment. And impact seed is a materials experiment that the Japanese have out there. So he'll go out and you see it flashing in blue there, and he'll install a cover on it to protect the experiment. Then he'll take it off and put it on his body restraint tether. Here's some MBL footage of him unbolting it. And the experiment itself is what's in his left hand. So he's using his pistol grip to, to tool to undo the bolts on it. And then he'll pop the experiment off, put it on his BRT, and take it to the airlock. And again, the impact seat is what just came off there. So he'll translate back down the Japanese module, back down space station to the airlock, and he's just going to temporarily stow the impact seat on the outside of the airlock until he puts it inside the airlock at a later time. And while this is happening, the arm is moving the new ammonia tank that we it just took from the EV crew in the payload bay over to the external storage platform 2, or ESP2, which is just outside the airlock. And Rick and Clay are going to meet the arm there. They're going to take an adjustable grapple bar off of the spare flex hose rotary coupler, or FHRC, and they're going to mount this grapple bar to the ATA. Here's some MBL footage of them installing that onto the ATA. And basically, uh, the, this is going to be used for the uh, POA, which is the payload ORU accommodation device on the uh, mobile platform or the, uh, the mobile transporter. Uh, it has an end effector just like the arm, so the robotic arm will fly the ATA over to the POA, and actually the POA will then grapple this adjustable grapple bar, and then the arm will release the ATA, and we'll leave it there between EVA 1 and 2. While that's happening, uh, Clay's going to come inside to the forward part of the truss here, 
and he's going to unbolt two bolts on a rate gyro assembly. So the RGA is another box the crew will be changing out. It's bolted, it has two bolts on the inside of the truss and then two bolts on the outside of the truss. So while Clay's on the inside on the forward side of the truss, Rick will go get the spare RGA and come to the back side of the truss. And he's going he's to attempt to the, the bag that has that RGA in it, the new one. Then he'll configure the work site so he can pull out the old one. He'll move that flashing piece of equipment if he needs to get it out of the way. Then he'll open up the thermal blanket. He'll unbolt the failed or the old RGA and pull it out. And here's some MBL footage of him pulling that out. It's a little bit smaller than an ATA. So he'll attempt so that just above him, and he'll grab the new one from the bag he brought out with him, install the new one, uh, put the old one in the bag, and then clean up the work site. Put the thermal blanket back over the RGA, and put any equipment back that he had to move to gain access to it. When he's done installing the new RGA, he's going to take the old one that's in the bag now and take it to the forward side of the truss and just temporarily stow it there, and he'll leave it and pick it up on his way inside the airlock later on. Once he temp stows it, he's going to go inside the truss and install the two bolts that Clay had removed on the old one. So while Rick is doing this, Clay's going to be heading out to the far port side of the truss, so heading all the way out to P6. And he'll be doing some work for the next flight for STS-132. They're changing out batteries on the P6 truss segment. There's already two foot restraints and two gap spanners that the crew uses to do the, the R&R of the batteries. They were out there for the last crew that did the one side of the batteries, so STS-132 will do the other side. So Clay's going to grab one of those foot restraints and one of the gap spanners from one side of the truss. He's just going to move around to the other side of the truss. So the battery uh, removal and replace takes, is quite time consuming, so anything we can do to help the next crew get started on that is uh, something they appreciated. So we'll install the gas spinner and install the foot restraint. As soon as Rick is done uh, with his last two bolts on the ray gyro assembly, he will head out to P6 also, and he will grab a second foot restraint and a second gas spanner, and he will also move those to the other side of the P6 truss segment. While Rick is doing that, Clay is going to actually start uh, breaking torque on uh, both bolts on all six batteries. So he's going to release the bolt by one turn and then just lightly tighten it up again. These bolts were launched with fairly high torque, uh, and to help the next crew with their change out to go as fast as possible, they're just going to loosen up those bolts a little bit so things go quicker for them. And here's an animation of Rick installing his gap spanner. So I have two gas spinners running across the series of batteries and then two foot restraints for the next crew to use. And on their way uh, after this task, if they have time, uh, the crew will mate a connector between P4 and P5. This allows ammonia to flow out to the P5, uh, P6 segment, uh, but only if we have time will be get ahead for them. Uh, after that, they will clean up everything and head back inside uh, to the airlock which will conclude EVA-1. Uh, the crew will have a day in between EVA-1 and 2, and the arm, I'm sure you heard before in the other uh, briefing, will walk off between the EVAs. This will allow the arm to have access to the actual old uh, ATA worksite. And so the, the main thing for EVA-2 will be